And, and I honestly believe that the church, as we know it now, is going to change dramatically in a very, very short time. I believe we're going to see different things that are happening. And I, and I was reading this, and, I, and I, so I, I just wanted to write it down for a little bit. Don't limit God. Don't be surprised when God moves by His Spirit. See, if we don't understand something, many times we reject it. I also believe we've got to be very, very careful because there's wolves going around in sheep's clothing. There's a lot of wrong theologies and things that are going around and different stuff that's happening uh, as, the, as the church begins to fill itself with the world instead of the Holy Spirit. So don't be surprised when God moves by His Spirit. In the early days of Azusa Street Revival, I read a quote from Frank Barterman, who was mightily used in this revival. And this is what he said. This is just before the revival broke out. It seems as if both heaven and hell came to town. Conviction was mighty on people, and many reacted violently. When they came within two or three blocks from Azusa Street, they were seized with conviction. See, if we're believing God for, a, for an outpouring of His Spirit, it's not going to be necessarily an outpouring that our understanding is going to understand. He's going to do something by His Spirit. But can I say this, that when it happens there will come a quickening on the inside of us that we'll know it's God. And we've seen a lot of things that, that uh, you know, as God's moved that have blown our natural mind, but in the realm of the Spirit, it's quickened us. And we've seen the hand of God mightily move. So, Father, we give you praise today. We're here as your kids. We're here as your people we want to thank you for everything you're doing in us and through us. We just want to thank you that you put your hand on our lives. And Father, I pray that you'll continue to just guide us and lead us. And for that, we'll give you all the praise and we'll give you all the glory. Amen. We've just had three amazing weeks with, uh, with Rocky at the church. And Rocky's just uh, said so many things there that, really uh, spoke to me, challenged me. And uh, one of the things there that he spoke about the other day was about the church. And he said the word church really isn't the, as we see it. It's not a building. It's not, this is not church really. It's, a, it's us. We're here together. But really, church is people. And he said that the word that we should use is called out. And when we realize that God has called us out to take us into something, that we start to understand that we're just not going to sit back here and wait for things to happen or just wait for the rapture or whatever theology you have. But we're going to step in to the giftings and the office that God has put on our lives and become the called out ones. Because God wants to use a body of people in this day that we live in. And I believe that we want to put our hands up. You believe that? So I want you to open up your Bibles, if you would, with me to the book of Proverbs. And uh, it's just going to read from verse chapter 3. And we know these verses of Scripture only too well. And in the time that we're living, I believe, this, this time that you and I are alive, Wigglesworth was here, he's gone. Catherine Kuhlman, Finney, all these others, they had their time, but it's now it's our time. This is where we are. And so for us, 
to be able to move into what God has for us, I believe certain things are going to happen. And this is what it says uh, in uh, Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. It says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct or lead you. He will direct your path. I want to ask a, a question here. What are people saying about Jesus because of you? What are your neighbours, your friends, the people that you work with, the people that serve you food or something like that, the waitresses, the people that you come in contact with? What are they saying about Jesus because of you? What, what are we portraying? What are we seeing? You see, a lot of us have been affected by life. Anybody here ever had a bad day? Any, anybody ever had a bad thing happen to you? Anybody ever treated you wrong and you didn't deserve it? Or you did deserve it, it doesn't matter, it still has the same effect. Have you, have you been treated like that? You see, we are victims a lot of circumstances. Now, when we come to Christ, this is what He wants to do. He wants to come into our life to break the strongholds, the mindsets, the things there that are going to stop us from penetrating and entering into the realm that God has for us to go into. A lot of times it's fear. We've, we've sung a lot of songs today about fear. And a lot of times the fear of the unknown stops people from going in. A lot of times when Jesus appeared, the first reaction from the disciples was that they had fear in their lives. They thought he was a ghost or they thought something else. Until, everybody say until, until he spoke. And that's what we've got to do. We've got to come to a place where we, I'm not talking to this place, I'm talking about a place in God where God can talk to us, where we can hear His voice, where, where He can, where He can, and when we hear His voice, we're going to know His voice. Jesus said, fear not, it is I. Don't be worried, it is me. And friend, I want to say that I believe that God's going to take us into things that Perhaps we haven't seen before, but it's God, and God, God will speak to us in the realm, in the midst of it. Mindsets, unbelief, the way you've been raised, all make way for God's Word to either become real to us or just a fable. We've all been affected. I, I heard people say I had no, no chance of getting to heaven because I'd done three, some sort of sins. I can't remember what they were now. I thought, that's all you know. I did a lot more than that. But anyhow. <laughs> so I had no hope of ever getting into heaven. And that's what I was taught, not by my family, but by other kids. And so you have these mindsets that God is so far away from me. And I can't approach Him. I, I've got no hope anyhow. I didn't really want to go there. So all these things have an effect on my life and on your life. A lot of people have been brought up in a Christian environment and, and Jesus is very, very real to them. In the Old Testament, the people there, were they, they relied on God. They understood God. They knew that there was a God. They knew God was with them. They, they had total confidence in that. But I don't know about you, but I didn't have confidence in that. And so my mindsets and my belief systems and everything like that. And doesn't matter how old I am, a lot of those things still resonate inside me. A lot of those things are still there. And, and so God's continually trying to break those things. Our belief systems. I believe that when Jesus came on this planet, He demonstrated something that I believe that we, the church, have got to grasp again. He demonstrated faith 
in God. Not in the system. There's a lot of people today that have got no faith in the church. But we've got to turn our attention now, not on people. Get your attention off me. Get your attention off, off some great TV preacher or whatever it might be. Get your attention off those sort of people and have faith in God. Have faith in God. Amen. It says there in Hebrews 11, 6, it says, For without faith it is impossible to please Him. That's God. For he who comes to God must believe that He is. I believe that that's a lot of times we struggle because we don't have confidence in God. We don't have confidence in His Word. We don't have confidence in what He said He can do. We've got to break some mindsets and, and, and understand that God is God and, and that God is love. Amen. And it says here, it says, we've got to believe that, that, he, that he is and that He is a rewarder. Everybody say rewarder. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. That's not necessarily just somebody that's playing the game. But going after God, wanting God, wanting His presence, wanting, wanting His anointing. God is a rewarder. That's the truth. But there's something there that I believe that we need to do. It says also in Habakkuk, Habakkuk 2 verse 4, it says, The just shall live by faith. What is faith? Faith is not necessarily having a three-story house and a, and a Mercedes Benz underneath it and a million dollars in the bank. Faith simply is trusting God. Faith is believing God. These kids that are going over seas there, they, they've just got to put their trust in God. Because you see, a week ago, that was not even in their thinking. Or it might have been two weeks ago. They never even thought that that's what they'd be doing. They were, they were just going to, you know, over here administrating things and he was working and making some finance so, so that they could buy these things and do this sort of stuff and help Ravi over there and support her. But all of a sudden, they're there and the Spirit of God says, I want you to go. <laughs> so one week later or 10 days later, they're on their way tomorrow. And you can't do that unless you trust God. They've got a precious little girl that they've got to look after. They've got things there that, that need to be done. Have faith in God. The just shall live by faith. Only way to live, we can't live. The church has got to live by faith. In Matthew 17 verse 20 it says, Have faith as a mustard seed. And you might say, well, I don't have much faith. Well, a mustard seed is very small, but it will grow into a massive tree. And that's what God wants to do in our lives. Romans 10, 17, it says faith uh, comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. It says on that Azusa Street revival, it was like heaven and hell both uh, fell on the city. I want to tell you, every person that tries to step out in faith, it's like heaven and hell comes at you. God's saying, come on, kids, I want you to go. Come on, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to do this. But then all of a sudden, after a while, you hear the other stuff that says you'll never make it. Who do you think you are? You're going to go broke. You're going to starve to death. You, this won't happen. How are you going to do this? Who will come? Nobody will come. And so you've got this conflict inside you. But somehow or other on the inside, we've got to rise up. I want to tell you, I'm not just talking about Carmody and, and Simon. I, I'm not talking about me. I'm not talking about anything. I'm talking about us. When you start to step out in faith and you start to believe God, I guarantee it that you say, well, you know, when the uh, uh, prayer meeting is announced uh, and, and yeah, the prayer meeting, hallelujah. There's so many people that say, oh, I'm going to go to the prayer meeting. Oh, I'm going to go this week. I'm going to go this week. But it never happens because as sure as God made little apples, it's like heaven and hell comes at you at the same time. And the devil, if he gets his way, he'll talk you out of it. It's too cold. <laughs> Is it okay? 
Come on, you hear what I'm saying here today? I'm glad Jesus didn't say, man, I'm not getting up on that cross. Look, they haven't even, it's rough. They didn't even plane it. <laughs> I'm not going to let them rub, put those big nails into my hand. Man, they're, they're rusty. I could get an infection. <laughs> no, friend, I want to tell you, it's like, it's like we've got to break through some stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna, if, we want, if we're going to see what we believe God says, Faith cometh by hearing. I want to tell you, unbelief comes the same way. Hebrews 11 verse 1, it says, Faith is a substance, the evidence of things hoped for. In other words, faith is the substance that brings the reality. It's no good just praying and praying and praying and, and not expecting anything. But when you pray in faith, something can change around the atmosphere. You know, a lot of revivals that started around the world, it wasn't just a matter that somebody got up one Sunday morning and said, oh, let's have a shunder a Monday this morning and let's speak in tongues for 10 minutes and all of a sudden revival came. Some of those people prayed for 10 and 15 years. Some of those people were on their faces all night for week after week after week after week. Sometimes we don't understand. We've got to push through some stuff. Amazing things will happen. I believe that God's Word will come to pass. Do you believe that today? Faith, God, <laughs> can't, you can't separate them. God is the rewarder, that's the truth. But our unbelief system sometimes tells us God is a withholder. Can I say this? God is more interested God is more interested in that woman receiving more pure legs, holy legs that will cause her to run around the place than you and I will ever be. He is more interested in those kids than that over there that have been sold into slavery and into prostitution and stuff. He's more, a million times more than, than Carmony and Steve will, uh, Simon will ever be. I've got a Carmony and, Carmony and Steve over in Canada. <laughs> More than they'll ever, ever be. He's more interested in the Sunshine Coast than I will ever be. He wants to see souls saved and people healed and, and, he, and, and the atrocity that's happening and, and, and marriages and abortion that's happening in, even in our town. We can weep over it and we can get excited over it and things like that, but I want to tell you that Jesus went to the cross for it and He died for it. And he says, come on, I want to raise up a church. I want to raise up a people. But oh, today we want, oh my God, I, I just want the comfort. I just want the hallelujahs, please. Now, I want to tell you, friends, it's going to be a few gravel knees. Don't have to clap just because I'm preaching so good. Really the only thing that can change the way we think is having an encounter with the living God. Sensing His presence. Knowing His love. I want you to have a look with me in the book of Mark. Mark chapter 4. God's good. You just believe God's good. <sighs> Verse 30 says, Then he said, to what shall we liken the kingdom of God? With what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown in the ground, it is smaller than all the seeds of earth. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs and shoots out large branches, branches so that the birds of the air may nest inside it. I don't care who you are, 
When you come to Jesus and get saved, we bring our belief system with us, our mindsets. And I believe that's what God's got to crush. In other words, a lot of baggage. Jesus gathered some disciples and they were good guys. They were fishermen. And he said, come with me. That obviously had some sort of a religious background, upbringing. And Jesus was walking along the road one day and they looked at Jesus and they, they saw a blind man. Blind man was sitting there and, and all of a sudden their garbage and their baggage started to bubble up inside them. I suppose with a little bit of pride, we'll just show this bloke that we're not real rookies. <laughs> Who sinned? This man or his parents that he was born blind? We know a little bit. You know nothing. He said, neither. Got nothing to do with that. And you know what? A lot of stuff that we believe has got nothing to do with the kingdom. It's got nothing to, it's, it's just stuff that's been sown into us. But I want to tell you, when God starts to move, when God, that's the challenge. If we don't open ourselves up to say, God, God, I want, I just want you to get inside my brain. I want you to get inside my mind, my mindset, things there that, that are in there that, that I know that are in my mind, my wrong thinking, my wrong attitudes, anger, bitterness, love of money, all these sort of things will hinder me from going forward with you. Who sinned? All this stuff that gets on the inside of us. And God wants to, because if we don't get rid of that, when God starts to move, I'm going to tell you, it's going to affect us. Because we won't, our mindsets will say, that is not God. That's not God. <laughs> God wouldn't do that. Bring a lot of baggage with us. In Mark 4, verse 33, and it says, Without such a parable, he spoke the word to them as they are able to bear it. But without a parable, he did not speak to them. And when they were alone, he explained all things to his disciples. So here they are, they're speaking in parables. And here's the, the thing that I want to say is, Sometimes God can't really say what He wants to say. He can't reveal really what He wants to reveal. Why? Because we don't really know Him. They that come to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. We've got, to, we've got to somehow or other, God, please help me, please help me, please help me. And, and it goes on in verse 35, if you're really, you know, He said to them, come, come with me, come, come with me, I'll make you fishers of men. And these guys followed hard after God. They followed hard after Jesus. He read their hearts. How many people know that God can read your heart? He can read your intentions. Come on. There are a lot of people that are go to church for the wrong reasons. I'm not trying to be rude or nasty or anything like that. I'm just trying to, if, if, I'm just trying to prepare us. I'm preparing my own heart. I'm getting more out of this than you are, obviously. <laughs> I'm excited as, I, I don't know, because I just know that, that <laughs> my knower knows that there's something brewing and it's not the coffee. <laughs> there's something in the realm of the Spirit that's starting to, to go in on the inside. And, and, and you see, if you're going after God, if, you, if you're wanting God, God will start to show Himself to you. 
not necessarily to everybody. I don't know if I'm making any sense here, but anyhow, it's making sense to me. On the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. Here they are. He said, okay, I'm talking to them in parallel. I'm explaining things to them. They look at me like a cow looks at a new gate. They don't really understand. They don't have the faith. They don't have the confidence. They don't really know. I've got to do something in their lives to break that mindset. I've got to do something in their lives to break that unbelief. I've got to, they've got to understand that I can do all things. They've got to understand who I am, that then when, when, I, when they're with me, there's no weapon formed against them can prosper. We quote the Scriptures and wonder why it doesn't work because we're in a different paddock. Somewhere over there, you've got to get close to God. And here it says, let's cross over. And it's an interesting story. And when they left the multitude, they took him along in, a, in, in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with him. And a great windstorm arose and the waves beat in the boat. And it was already filling. He was in the stern asleep on a pillow. I don't believe for one minute that he was really asleep. <laughs> I reckon he was watching with one eye. <laughs> what are these boys going to do? Because <laughs> they're just about to meet. <laughs> they're just about ready to have the challenge of their life. Oh, anybody ever had one of them? I'm not talking about being in a boat. You don't have to be in a boat it's got to be in the sea of life. Challenges come. I reckon he had one eye open. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat that was already filling. He was on the stern, a stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and they said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Oh my God, I've said that. <laughs> you ever said that? Come on, tell the truth and shame the devil. You know why I said it? Because I didn't really know who was in the boat. I didn't really know what he could do. I didn't understand what he was capable of. As far as they were concerned, they were going to the other side. <laughs> As far as God was concerned, He was going to open up the eyes of their understanding. <laughs> they want to, you, <laughs> how many people want to see Jesus? <laughs> Come on. How many people want to see Him? And, 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 and the story goes on. Teacher, do you, do you not care that we are perishing? And he arose and he rebuked the wind and, the, and, and he said to the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And then he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it you have no faith? Those words are very, very powerful. What is he trying to get inside the church today? Faith. That no matter what you're doing, God, you, you're going to go with us. And it says, and they feared exceedingly and they said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? And I believe Jesus would have overheard that and he said, finally, they're asking the right question. Who can this fellow be that even the wind and the sea obey him? That's the bloke I need to get. Hey? That's the fellow I'm praying to, amen? Because that's the fellow I need to get to know better. Who can this man be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Oh my goodness, what an amazing thing. What an amazing thing. And they mostly thought, pray. He went he mad at us, but that's okay. <laughs> at least we're, we're safe. And they feared exceedingly, said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadareans. And when they come out of the boat, I believe, I, I, I often think this, and I've preached it a lot, that I believe that Jesus would have been walking up the, up the beach and they would have been still in the boat saying, you said I've got no faith. Don't even remember. Don't even remember. I left the fishing boat. Don't even remember. I didn't. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Preacher's telling us we've got no faith. I'm not saying that. 
If that's what you're hearing, that's what you got. <laughs> I'm not saying that. But if that's what you believe, that's what you got. They would have been hanging around the boat. <laughs> then they would have heard this blood-curdling yodel. I reckon their eyeballs would have just about turned inside out. I said, where are we? Where are we? <laughs> I've got to stop here. When steel first come to our church. <laughs> I know, I know, I know you were saying, where am I? <laughs> what have I come amongst? <laughs> I said to Nancy, I said, steel, I, sh I said, that man, I, I didn't know who you were. I said, that man, I said, we'll never see him again. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Where am I? What, what am I doing here? Where are we? And I reckon that there would have been 12 little bumps on the back of Jesus. <laughs> Heads looking over his shoulder. <laughs> As this madman, naked, crazy, Chains still hanging off him where he'd broken fetters and ropes and goodness knows what. Where he'd tormented the city, where he, where he lived in the tombs alone. Tormented. 2,000, uh, they, said, they said he's got, had a legion of demons. 2,000, they say, is a legion. Goes on to say that there's 2,000 swine. I don't know if that's connected. I couldn't care less in here. All I know is there was a lot. <laughs> I see this maniac coming at him. And Jesus just stood there. Stood there. You see, when trouble comes at you, if somewhere or other we stop, as Tom was talking today about the Jesus in us, the Jesus in you is not fearful. The Jesus in you is not fearful. That's a time you've got to get where I am. Hey, it's the time you've got to get hold of him. The Jesus inside you is not fearful. He'll take on whatever can come your way. He'll take on whatever comes your way. He'll fight for you. He'll do whatever it is necessary for you. Always night and day, he was in the mountains. And in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him and he cried out with a loud voice saying, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. A lot of teachers say that this guy was a backslidden preacher. He acknowledged Jesus when he saw him. Full of demons. But he acknowledged Jesus when he saw him. I don't know if that's true. We won't worry about that, will we? <laughs> I heard the other day that the earth is flat. No, listen, true. <laughs> you, Rocky was <laughs> talking to me about the churches in America and what they, what they believe in. And he told me what they were saying, and I was almost totally convinced that it's flat. <laughs> but they just leave out some stuff. I don't know. I, look, you know what? I couldn't care less. Hey, eh? I don't care if it's flat, round, square. <laughs> oh, I'm getting this. <laughs> That's a good trick. <laughs> and he said, come out of the man, unclean spirit. What is your name? <laughs> of course, he said, legion. I'll just close then. Verse 15, it says, Then they came to Jesus and saw the one 
who had been demon-possessed and had a legion sitting and clothed and in a right mind, and they were afraid. This man now begins to plead with Jesus. People start to plead and ask him to get out of the place. But he, he who had been demon possessed begged him that he might go with him. But Jesus did not permit him and said, go home to your friends and tell them the great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. They say that this man just didn't go back and gather his relatives and friends. It says that that man personally evangelized 10 cities. Friend, when God touches you, just start telling people what God's done for you. Have you got a story today? Anybody got a story? Little story. A little story. I just want to, if I can find it. What are people saying about Jesus because of you? I just wanted to get that statement right. It's not my statement, it's somebody else's statement. But what are people saying about Jesus because of you? What, what is going on in our lives? How many people are, pre are preparing yourselves for revival? How many people are just preparing yourself for the rapture? <laughs> Not getting too much feedback. How many people are preparing yourself for revival? Or how many people are just preparing yourself for the rapture? It may not come in your time. You know, I know a lot of people that have said that the rapture was going to come. You know that every move of God so far, right throughout since 1900 and even before that, all believed that that move was going to bring Jesus back. I believe it's a deterrent. I, I, I've, got, I've got news for you. Now listen carefully, please. I can tell you exactly when Jesus is coming back. Right? I can tell you, I know, exactly when Jesus is coming back. He's coming back when He's ready. <laughs> and what He's, doing, what he's going to say is, coming ready or not. <laughs> so get yourself ready, amen? Get yourself ready. For a move of the Spirit. Move of the Spirit. <laughs> He's got something to say, old boy. You won't stop him. <laughs> Thank you. Can we have the musos? Holy Ghost. I'm sure I had a lot more to say, but those kids come back in. Do you mean? Yeah? Come on. I just want to just, that's what I wanted to finish with. I had a video clip from uh, Alan Wills. And he was uh, standing beside the Victoria Falls. I've been to the Victoria Falls. It's an amazing thing. The millions upon millions of gallons of water that are just cascading over those rocks. The roar you can actually hear for miles upon miles. You can actually, miles away, you can see the mist as it's going up into the air. But the roar, the, the sound, and they were, you can't get too close to it because they just don't let you, it's all fenced off. But Alan said he was there, in, 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 right there at the Victoria Falls, and he said the sound that he heard as he heard it, he said, God spoke to him. He said, this is the sound of the coming, outpouring 
of my spirit that I'm going to bring upon the earth. He said that they were standing a, a fair distance away from the, the falls, but the atmosphere was so full of the of the of the the water or whatever it is, they were saturated. And what's going to happen is when the Spirit of God comes like that, it's just going to fill the whole place and the atmosphere, atmosphere is just going to go forth and it's going to touch people. I, I honestly believe that Azusa Street, and they prophesied that what happened in Azusa Street would happen again. And a lot of people have prophesied about Australia and different nations and, and goodness knows what. I heard a person, you know, in another nation, they said the exact same things that they said about Australia. Look, I, I just know that God's going to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh. Yeah. We're not special. We're just people. Don't just think that we're the, and God's just going to do it through us. And, and, and I've heard this, then out of, out of Australia is just going to go this worldwide move. I heard that. Pre, same word over other nations. And we can get so caught up in that that we forget about the little square that we're standing on. <laughs> eh? We've got to get right, eh? We've got to get hungry. We've got to, we've got to get, get going for God. Let God get rid of the rubbish out of our lives. And I believe that that anointing will go out and it's going to touch the just and it's going to touch the unjust. And it's going to bring conviction upon people. You know, I believe it's going to fall in the church like that. I, oh dear Jesus. I honestly believe that the altars are going to be filled before we're going to see the great revival of saints on their face, weeping before God. If you don't like it, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be rude. Just trying to be real. How many think believe, believe something's got to change? Yeah. Hey? How many people believe something's got to change? Go on, let's stand up. Let's stand up. How many people really want to change? How many people just want to change? I might just keep that for a little while, please. I just want to. Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, that's just, yeah, just, just do that. That's, just do that. That's good. And just start to play. Just. Jesus, a little bit louder. A little bit louder. Come on, let, it, let, let that anointing just come over you right now. Let the presence of God come over us. let your presence come over us lift up your hearts come on lift up your hearts to God God we want to see change we want to see change we, we know we, you can't do it until we change you couldn't do it in the disciples so they could see you to see all your power they saw the anointing they watched you Lord as you even went on further and a woman who had an issue of blood got healed and Jairus's daughter you raised her from the dead and they were catching it they were catching it started to catch it just let me say this to you when Jesus was doing all those sort of things he had 12 men and they were walking through and they saw the miracles they, they saw the, 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 the sea calm they, they saw the wind cease they saw that maniac man now in a sound mind clothed peaceful Jesus sent him back to preach to the people and they saw a woman who touched the hem of Jesus' garment and virtue flowed out of him and, and they were healed. And then they walked a bit further and they met a man by the name of Jairus. And he said, my daughter's dying. Will you come and lay your hands on her? Went a little bit further and somebody turned, turned up and said to him, your daughter's dead. Your daughter's dead. And I believe that Jesus would have been looking at those 12 as those words, he spoke to the man, yeah, he said, don't, don't, don't fear, only believe. Don't fear, only believe. But I guarantee when I was looking at those disciples, looking for something in them. Can I say this? I believe that God's walking over the churches of the world today and He's looking for people in the, in the turmoil, in the troubled, in the times or whatever's going on. 
He's looking for a people. But he had 12 with him. But he looked at the 12 and he said, Peter, James and John, you come with me. The rest of you stay here. I want to be one of the ones he says, come with me. I don't want to be one of the ones he says, stay here. I want him to find faith in me. I want him to find something in me. Find something in me. You might look at yourself and you say, I'm not worthy, I'm not good enough. That's a heap of rubbish. It's like the onslaught of the devil. God coming to you to touch you, and then the devil comes in as well. Frank said it, he said, just before the revival, it was like as if hell and heaven both came at the same time. We see a lot and we read a lot in the news about what's going on in the natural world, but we don't hear much about what's going on in the spirit world. But I want to tell you, I want to guarantee you, God's doing more. He's looking for people, He's looking for people. He's looking for people. I'm just gonna open this altar this morning. If God's talking to you. You know that He's spoken to you and you and you balked. He's asked you to do something and you don't don't get look, that's natural. Come on, I've done it a hundred times. I've said to him a hundred times, if not more, don't you care we're perishing? But then he gave me a revelation and an understanding that I understood that he loves people more than I do, that he cares for people more than I care. So I've never ever said that to him again. But I had to have that revelation that took that lie out of it. God loves this world and he loves the people of this world more than you and I would ever do. God, you care, you sent your son Jesus to die. Now come and touch my life, I pray. This solemn time right now, just God's talking and you want to come and stand out here and confess or whatever, do whatever, I don't know. It's not my meeting from now on, it's His. If God's talking to you and you just want to come, can we sing forever? Moon and stars, they went. The morning sun was dead. The Saviour of the world was fallen. His body on the cross his blood poured out for us, the weight of every curse upon.